The creator trap is destroying your YouTube channel growth. It's destroying your mental clarity and ultimately it's destroying the future that you want to build and the freedom you want to enter in. In short, the creator trap is destroying you. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what is the creator trap, how to avoid it and how to break out of it if you're in it. So let's get it. Hey, I'm Chris and back in 2016, yeah, that's right, 2016, I started creating content and I started posting on YouTube. And so I'm posting basically daily vlog videos of me going to work, doing normal day stuff. And a lot of it's just uh, clips with music in the background. I'm not even talking or anything. And I posted maybe like five to 10 videos of that. And I stopped and then uh, 2018 comes around, end of 2018, 2019, I start creating more content. And this is the time where I start going on this creative more creative journey where I am not just creating content for making music. I was doing beat videos and trying to learn how to be a beat maker, produce content around that. But then 2019, I am doing more artsy stuff. So like painting, drawing, illustrating, and creating content around it. So this is where I really start focusing on the YouTube channel. And start posting about that. So this is actually the same channel that you're watching now. I'm posting all the same stuff. And most of that content is now hidden. You can't see it. You never will. No, I'm just kidding. You will if you give me money. I'm going on this journey. I'm going on this path to discover who I am. And I was also learning a lot about God at the time. I was learning a lot about these new skills that I wanted to learn. And... I just enjoy making videos, making content around that. I wasn't specifically trying to go on YouTube or trying to be a YouTuber. I was just wanting to try stuff out and post. And then it went into me trying to be a YouTuber. And it was more of a uh, philosophical, spiritual, Christianity approach to YouTube where I was doing more creative things, but I was talking about lessons that I was learning and trying to be encouraging and stuff like that. So my content was uh, all over the place. My idea ideas, what I was learning was all over the place. What I wanted to do, I wasn't really sure. I just wanted to create content. So that's what I did. And so now that's 2019. Now it's 2024. So where have I come since then? And just stick with me. I promise you <laughs> this will get to the crux of what we're talking about in the creator trap. And so 2019, now I'm going to 2024. So during that time professionally, I'm also part of a startup building a software product. Then I go to another startup that's a bigger startup doing more software. And during this time, I'm just trying to come up with ideas to do on my own, to do on my side, to build a side project, build a side startup. And I go through 10 ideas probably. Never really stick with anything. And I'm still doing YouTube and still doing my professional career, still learning a lot, still putting content out there, but just never sticking with one thing, right? And then I'd say maybe two years ago, I started following more people on Instagram and YouTube and stuff gets more professional. Like Instagram goes from just photos to increasing to like professional content creators where their creations are just beautiful and YouTube where, you know, Mr. Beast has been popular for a while, but like him and Ryan Trahan and I don't know, a million other people are starting to produce videos that are just like millions of dollars put into videos to produce like a masterpiece, a movie. And I just love that. And so YouTube has always been fascinating and I've always wanted to do something with it, but my interest and what I had, my skills were just all over the place. And so I follow people like Alex Hormozzi, and other content creators and they tell you how to create content how to build a side business and how to build an audience and I'm following people on Twitter talking about writing how to build an audience and it's all these different sects of interest in my life and never really understanding uh, what I want to do but just caught in this trap of listening to creators watching creators listening watching trying something getting bored going back trying to find more ideas, better ideas. And there's a guy who uh, has a product, a company called Starter Story, and they, they produce content that's like, this guy made a million dollars this year. This guy made a 
$100,000 from this simple idea. And it's just constantly new ideas. And I follow other people like this. These kind of products have been around for a while. All these different entrepreneurs being successful, doing something. And I was like, I can do that. Let me try that. I can do that. Let me try that. I can do that. Let me try it. So millions of ideas, millions of people. My head is scattered. And I don't know what to do. This is essentially the creator trap. The thing about this is that creatives like myself who have a lot of interest, not really sure what their purpose is, their purpose might not just be one thing. They might have skills that are for a lot of things. And honestly, that's kind of how I'm built. I enjoy doing a lot of things. I enjoy learning new things, um, but sometimes it's just too much. And without focus, I can't be successful. So their creator trap, it usually starts out with good intentions. Someone, as in myself, I follow, let's just say Alex Mosey because he's on top of my mind, and he's talking about building business and putting in work and creating content around what your interest is. Um, or I can even say someone like um, Justin Welsh, who talks about writing, building an audience, selling a course to your audience, and just two of those people. So you're following multiple people, I'm following multiple people, and telling me how to make money on the side. And so my intentions were good. I wanted to build a better life for me and my family. I had the good intentions to, you know, not just be a slave to my nine to five job. And so my intentions are good and that's how it mostly starts out. But then as you get ideas and you're following someone long enough, you feel like you can do it. You buy the course, you buy more courses, you try more things. Uh, and I would just try things, get bored, try something else, and try multiple things at one time. So never focused, always getting bored, uninterested, um, thinking that I can do something but didn't really care for it. So I'm just trying a bunch of different things and not making any progress. And so I would go from excitement to boredom to something new. And this, the creator trap is this cycle, the cycle of digesting information or reading, watching, whatever it may be, and then trying to do that thing or trying to do multiple of those things at once, trying for a little bit, getting bored or getting distracted again by new ideas, failing, giving up, and then repeating the cycle. So idea, boredom, or distraction, giving up, retry. This is the creator trap. It's the creator trap that, I mean, I'm sure most gurus in the creator space don't want you to do this, like, they don't want you to buy their course and forever be buying their courses that say the same thing. Um, I'm sure they don't want you to watch all their videos and then all the rest of the 10 other creators that they're watching and all their videos. Get their information and just never do anything with it. Now, I'm sure some are like that because they need your money, but some are actually legit, some are real, and they want you to, to be able to empower yourself and to step into that freedom that they've experienced. And so... I mean, maybe I'm in that category, maybe not. <laughs> so I do think money-making gurus and money-making is a deadly trap. But there's good news. You can avoid it. You can learn to recognize it and to not fall into it. And if you're in it, you can get out of it. So here is a few steps to do that. First one is simply recognizing that there is a creator trap. And I could also label this as a creative trap, a creative personality trap. If you're a creative person and your interest, you have shiny object syndrome like I do, then know that you can fall into that. Know that you can bounce around from idea to idea, you know, pull yourself out of it so you can see the situation clearly and, you know, evaluate what's going on. That's the first step in realizing if you're in this trap and avoiding from getting into this trap. The second one is actually taking a step into building the thing that you want to build that you're interested in. And that is writing down your skills and your interests and what the market wants, okay? And so this is a key because it will help you recognize, do you have the skills that you need to build a business? Like say you wanna start a YouTube channel over cooking, right? Cause you cook sometimes and it's fun. Well, how good of a cooker are you? Do you need to buy the cooking course? If so, that's cool. But know that you need the course to level up your skills, but then take what you learn from that and build the YouTube channel off of your cooking. Say you want to be a writer and you write fine, but you don't have necessarily the tactics to write on LinkedIn, for instance. Um, you want to have better clarity on that. 
buy the course, do the course, read the course, <laughs> learn from it, and then do. So sometimes you do have to build your skill in order to build a side business. That is totally fine. Um, as long as you know that 10 courses that talk about growing on LinkedIn or YouTube, they're gonna say basically the same stuff over and over and over again. So don't fall into the trap of just buying the course because the writer has convinced you, they have good copywriting skills, they've convinced you to buy their course. Don't do that. That's another one where you can just step out, evaluate the situation. I have a course, I have the skill, now I can take a step. When you get to the step part, so you have a skill, you have the idea that you wanna do, now you take a step. And this is the cheap step that I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a cheap step because the cheap step is the easiest thing that you can do for the cheapest amount, which is you are cooking, you want a cooking channel. You have this idea, you've been mulling over for a couple months, whatever. Start the YouTube channel, sign in, create a channel, uh, put up a graphic, put up a profile picture, put a description in, cool, that's a cheap step. Start an Instagram account, that's super cheap to do. It's free. You want to start writing on Twitter to build your personal brand? Create the account. That's a cheap step. Now, after the cheap step comes another cheap step, which is posting something. So if you want to create content for any platform, just post one thing and then do that the next day and then do that the next day. Do that the next day. Have no idea what you're posting? That's okay. Just post. Keep posting. Keep reevaluating. Keep taking a step. Step, 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 step. <laughs> I feel like I just made a video on this. If you don't know what to do, take a step, walk it out, walk in faith, and yeah, that is super important. Now that you've taken a step or a couple steps, there are two things that you need to recognize, and they kind of both revolve around perspective. So that's the general category. The next category is what happens when I get bored and the other one is what happens if no one likes, no one watches, no one reads the thing that I'm producing. So I'll go to this one first. If no one is liking, reading, watching your thing, and you still have joy in doing it, good. That is your sweet spot. That's what you want. Even though it can be discouraging no one's, you know, interacting with your content, you need to learn that your joy and your ability is not going to come from other people liking your stuff. Where you're going to find longevity is when you're doing something regardless of the outcome. And I'm not talking about doing something and putting yourself in financial ruin. I'm talking about doing something for the love of creating. And this is why I specifically say like a creative personality. And so when you're creative, you create because that's just who you are. So if you enjoy pro producing that YouTube channel, that cooking YouTube channel, and you just enjoy doing it, but you're getting no views, no interactions, okay, that's good. Keep doing it. Um, for a time now, let's say on the other spec on the other uh, I'll get back to that note in a second, but on the other side we have if you get bored Okay, so this is also a struggle with creatives you get bored posting that cooking channel and you get bored Maybe because no one is watching. Okay, that's fine But maybe you're getting bored because you're cooking and you don't know what to create and you're bored from it and so this is where it goes into their perspective part so you have perspective on your goals and your vision of your creativity and also the content that you're producing. So what is your goals? What is your perspective on both of them? If your perspective on creating is you like to cook because you enjoy doing it and you're going to keep doing it regardless if you're creating content, like good, you have a perspective on that. Now you're creating content for what? Are you building a business? Are you doing it for fun? Are you doing it for your just creative outlet? Whatever it is, that will get you into the mindset of how do I view content? Do I need to take courses on how to build a YouTube channel? Do I need to worry about not getting views? Do I need to learn how to design thumbnails? Do I need to learn how to design titles? And all these different steps um, that you could take if you're trying to build a business out of your content. Uh, if it's just for fun, then it's just for fun. You can stop doing it. The other thing is with boredom, you also have just laziness. <laughs> you know, not everything in life is easy. Most things are not. Most good things are not easy if they are to become something good. Let's take, for instance, sports. So, like, growing up, I played sports, and I didn't want to go to practice every day. I didn't want to practice every day. But at the end of the day, like, just going home and shooting on my basketball at home, 
my basketball goal at home. Like, that was just my sweet spot. And so, at the end of the day, I enjoyed doing it because I enjoy doing it. And I stuck with sports because I enjoyed it at the end of the day. Like, even though it's hard, even though it's painful, um, even though sometimes I sucked, even though I didn't get as much playing time as I wanted, whatever it may be, I still enjoyed doing it, so I kept doing it. And so I stuck with it, even though it's hard. This is the same perspective with content. Sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes it's going to be boring. Sometimes you're going to do things that you don't want to do. Sometimes you're going to spend money that you don't want to spend. There's a million reasons of why you can quit something. But if you have that perspective, then you know, is this something that is continuing to give me life, like basketball was for me, and I still play? Or is this something that's just not for me? It's not what God wants for me. It's not something I want to build upon. It's not a skill I want to continue doing. Either way is good as long as you have that perspective and know what you're doing. Don't just quit and be lazy just because you want to quit and be lazy. That's boring. <laughs> now, at the end of the day, avoiding this creator trap, uh, now that you have a perspective on that, going through your creative and creator journey, it's a journey. You know, you walk it out, you run into traps, you get out of the traps, you walk, you continue, you have you know, the ups and the downs, you go through the valleys, you go through the peaks. It's a journey, right? And so if you're someone who's a new creator and who is, you know, maybe struggling to get started um, or thinking about starting a channel, I have a video talking about seven anti-rules on how to get started making money as a content creator. So go check that out and I'll see y'all over there. See y'all later.